family, it's your boy Trap Vision 3D. Uh, thank you guys for being here. Thank you for being here for this premiere, man. And uh, I hope you guys learned something. Hope you guys feel inspired. You know what I'm saying? At the end of this, man. So let's jump up into it. All right, first and foremost, man, how many of you guys ever heard of Jack Johnson? Before we talk about Jack Johnson, man, look, I've been a boxing fan since I was a little kid, man. And this is going to go down. I'm going to tell you just like this. Muhammad Ali, to me, in my opinion, one of the greatest fighters ever, ever to step aside the ring. Not just because of the slick talk and everything he's done, man, but like what he's done, what he stood up for. His just whole persona, everything about him, man. I just looked up to this guy when I was a little kid, man. And then, and then, Mike Tyson. Bruh, this dude was a monster, is a beast, and still to this day is a guy that, you know what? When you were a little kid or at whatever age you were, well, let's just say because when I was coming up, I'm like, man, dude, if I got old enough, I still would fight Tyson. At this point in my life right now, I'm over 40 years old and I wouldn't fight Tyson at all. Got a lot of respect for him, but I'm like, dude, yeah, he got that old man strength. And then who can forget about Floyd Mayweather, right? You know what I'm saying? And there's a Roy Jones. There's so many fighters, you know what I'm saying? Sugar Ray. There's a lot of black fighters that have just pushed the needle forward, man. A lot of champions out here. But all of those, those people that I just named. And everybody knows about Muhammad Ali. He was slick talking. Man, he was savvy, man. He was smart. And then you got Floyd Mayweather. I heard um, Floyd. Now, to be fair, if you ask a boxer <laughs> um, who's the greatest of all time, right? They go through their list, right? You know, I heard, um, you know, they was interviewing uh, Floyd, right? It was a uh, news. I, don't, I can't remember where, where I found the source at. But they had like a top five, and they put Floyd at number four. They put Muhammad Ali and Tyson above him. He didn't agree with it. And um, you y'all know Floyd. Y'all know Floyd, man. The dude, he, he backs up his talk by the money and stuff like that. But I want to tell you what Floyd and Mr. Johnson has in common, man. The money. They make the money. They show, they show the money. I mean, Tyson did the same thing. What fighter? You know, like, fighters do that. You know, they make big purses, and they go out and fight. Now, let's jump back to Mr. Johnson, Jack, which was a black man had had his parents were slaves, right? And they, well, they were ex-slaves by the time he was born. And he was born in, I think, Galveston, Texas, right? So, Longhorns, I know anybody in Texas standing up like, yeah, woo, or whatever y'all chant. Um, and the crazy thing about his, his childhood from what they depicted is... He grew up in poverty. It was, you know what I'm saying? He was out working fields. He was out doing odd jobs, washing dishes and stuff like that. And he literally ran away. He escaped to New York, came to New York from Texas and um, started fighting as a, as a teenager, man. They were saying that it was a thing they were doing. They were fighting for socialists, right? These upstart, these up, uppity people. I'm just calling them uppity. Now, let's set the stage. This is the 1800s, all right? This is the 1800s. And... Slavery was a thing, okay? You know what I'm saying? Segregation, and then he coming up into Jim Crow type of era, right? And what happened was on the black circuit, now they had this thing called the color line. They wouldn't let black fighters fight, you know, any of the white fight, the top white fighters. They wouldn't allow them to fight for championship gold. So among the blacks, Jeffrey had made a name for himself. He going out there just tagging people. Boom, 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 boom. And one of the characteristics of Mr. Jack was his smile. They said this guy would just like smile or what, what have you. Now, he had an opportunity to fight for, I mean, because he dominated everybody in his, in his rank, right? Everybody in his weight class. He's dominating on the black side, right? And because of the color line, like the champion, the white champions wouldn't do it, right? So he had to, I think it was, his name was Burns. He literally um, said, I'm not going to fight this dude, you know what I'm saying, because he's black. I'm not about to fight, you know what I'm saying? I'm not about to fight him. Now, here's the ugly part. Now, you already know that whites felt like they were superior to blacks at that time. And then you had these editors that were writing the stories about blacks. And, man, when they got to talking about Jackson, I mean, I'm sorry. When they got to talking about uh, Johnson, the man, 
I, I'm not even, I wouldn't even put it in there. I saw, like, I literally read what these editors were putting in there when it comes to black fighters against white fighters. Just know it is very negative, all right? Uh, it's very demoralizing, so I just said, I'm going to leave that out. <clears throat> However, Burns said, he agreed, I'll fight him, I'll fight Jack, but he's going to come up with $30,000. I'm not fighting for, you know what I'm saying, nothing less than thirty grand. And somebody sponsored him. He was like, crap, all right, so I got to fight him. And what happens? <laughs> Boom! Your first, your very first, first black heavyweight champion of the world. Now, I'm going to tell you what this does, what this does. You fast forward to our time frame, right? We got past Jim Crow and all this other stuff. What that did for him being black and breaking through that barrier, and we looking back on what was going on, there were blacks being lynched for, just for less, just for walking to down up and down the street. You had women being raped and maimed. You had children being stripped from their homes and used for dumb stuff, right? Not even going to get into the graphic. Use your, you ain't got to use your imagination. It's facts. There were a lot of things going on, and he just broke a barrier. So for fighters now, like a Floyd Mayweather and, and whoever, and all boxers, you know what I'm saying, of color, you know what I'm saying, black and brown, you look towards the past, and I understand we talked about this last week. You know what I'm saying? Let's stop talking about racism because if you stop talking about it, it goes away. No, stop that because I'm going to tell you a fun fact at the end, the very end of this, at the very end of this. So going back to Jack, now he just broke the, the, that color line. Go. Well, it's still there, but, you know, he broke through and it closed back. It still had like a little gaping hole in it because, you know, we would have fighters like Muhammad Ali. You know what I'm saying? But anyway. Um, he goes on to fight, and they had this guy named, uh, Jeffries. Last name is Jeffries. Now, Jeffries was the heavyweight champion, right? He was like, yo, I, I, I did my thing. He retired as the champ, and he was just off. He was off. He said, I'm done. Now, let me, let me tell you before we get to that, leading up to this, the champ is living his best life. Remember I was talking about Floyd Mayweather? This dude, this dude, <laughs> this dude was the Floyd Mayweather of the 1900s, man. This dude was out here. He had suits. This dude had cigars. He had fast cars. And guess what? He had white women. Yo, this man was dating and smashing the best. He had models. And this one right here, dude was like, and dude, she was in the, the, Biggest thing going right now, uh, at that time, I'll say it right now, Psh, whatever. Uh, dude, when I tell you that all the people, I'm going to just say all the people, not just men, women too, just idolized her. And this dude just got her like, yeah, I'm, I'm popping, you know what I'm saying, I'm doing my thing. And he put it in their faces. Think about this, y'all. Think about the gravity of this, man. And I mean gravity, just think about a black hole, right, out in space. Right, you go, they say if you go into a black hole, it's, it's like your atoms and everything is ripped apart. This dude just ripped the fabric of socialism and blackism and whiteisms and all the isms, everything in the history books, man. This dude just like caused an earthquake in Australia somewhere, bro. Like, cause you dating white women, you driving cars, and he's doing something that like I think at the time minimum wage back in the 1800s was like 11 cent or 13 cent per hour. The average wage or minimum wage. Dude, you know what I'm saying? And that was white America, black America, of course, probably was below that. I had to do some more digging to find out if how much less. But, but, I'm talking about they making cents on a dollar per hour, man, just to make it, you know what I'm saying, make it do this. And this man is making it rain. He's like, look, I'm the champ, and I'm going to act like the champ. This dude, they said, man, he was a proud rooster. He had his chest up, man. You know what I'm saying? He's like, oh, like a peacock. You know what I mean? He got his feathers out. And this dude pull up with these white women. And he's kissing all on these white women in front of all these people, man. You know, they hated his guts. And you know what was crazy? The editors was killing him in the newspaper. Talking about him, man. I'm talking about, man, the N-word was being thrown away. Man, just thrown around. Just everywhere. Everywhere. You know what I'm saying? It's like they hated the fact. And they never called him by his name. It's based on what I was reading. At the end of it, they would put his name, Jack Johnson. But a Negro this. This Negro that. Negro, Negro, Negro. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, bro. Call that man by his name. Birdman said it, put some respect on it, but they didn't. However, he goes on to make, he's fighting. 
And he's not like a hiding champion. He's a fighting champion. He fought and defended. And they said the dude was finessing that. He was strong. He was powerful. And the one thing they hated about him was his smile because he smiled all the time. And he was like, we, and the editor was like, I just want to wipe the, wipe the grin off this dude. Somebody go in there. Please, somebody. And this is when they uh, got Jeffries to come back. Now, Jeffries had been off. He was out of shape. He was fat or whatever the case was. He wasn't in boxing. So a year. They gave him a year to get back in shape to get him. All while he's getting in shape, my man is out here doing this thing. He's driving all over the place, man. He's seeing the sights. He's walking because he's free. He's a free black man. He's walking through like nothing is phasing him, right? And he's like, hey, I'm, I'm smashing your white women, ha. Huh? And... I have to say this. I'm not saying it was said. I didn't read this. But think about this for a second. Put yourself. I don't care what color you are right now. You already know about the black experience, right? Of course you do. How would you feel if you were making tens of thousands of dollars where these everybody, like it was white folks making less than $1,100 a year. And you got this black dude that you, you took portion of your money to come see a fight. You came to see somebody knock him off his peg and it never happened. You know how pissed off you would be if you was a racist at that time? Now, let's fast forward to the fight. Let's uh, cuz I'm not going to go in, but look, and I, I I do I do tell you guys look deeper into his life, man, but I I got a fun fact for you at the end of this. <clears throat> so now here we are at the fight. We in the fight. Oh man, we about to go. You know what I'm saying? We got Johnson versus Jeffries. They about to go on this thing, man. And they going boom, 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 boom. They hitting it. Bam, 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 bam. They going at it, man. They killing each other. No, not really. Uh, for 15 rounds, they say Johnson was giving this dude the business until he finally said, hey, look, <laughs> I'm holding him up. Bam! Hold him up. Bam! Get him down. Knock him down. And where the fight should have been over with, you have reporters and people along the ring pushing him back up. Get up. Just to get him knocked down. His face was all just busted up, right? Now your man, and this was July 4th, 1910. Your man is the, man, he the champ. He the champ. He's celebrating. And guess what? What happens? You know what happens? I'm from Chicago, if y'all didn't know that already. Boom. You know what I'm saying? When the Bulls won, i never forget it. When the Bulls won, we ran outside and was screaming, man. It was people flipping cars over. Chicago erupted. And it was all racist. Everybody was out there just flipping cars, just throwing confetti. I don't even know where we got it from, but we threw it. And, like, I don't care. We were celebrating because we felt like, you know what I'm saying, like our, our champions, man, people that we idolize, people we look up to have just, just did the impossible. And this is what my man did. He broke through that color line. He broke through the segregation. He broke through the hate, even though people still hated his guts. And I'm going to tell you what happened. As he lived his life, and, you know, regardless of him smiling at people in the ring, smiling at them, because you think about this. They were sending him death threats. You bet not win, boy. If you win, we going to kill you. We going to lynch you. We going to kill this. We going to kill that, blah, 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 whatever. And he didn't let none of that phase him. He went in there. So I imagine that he smiled at this opponent because he put hatred, he put that fear on this guy's face. And he beat the brakes off of it. You know what I'm saying? I smile too. Your oppressor, if you've been oppressed and you got a chance to legally do something to it, you wouldn't be happy? Oh, yes. I'm smiling all the way to the bank, baby. Yes. So the Floyd Mayweather of the 1900s is out here gallivanting. He's doing his thing. We like, wah, wah, wah. 1910, July 4th, Independence Day. The Americans should be so happy. But now they just had this Negro champion knock out the great white hope. Go look it up. Go look at the movie. Come on, man. James Earl Jones did a stage play on this, man. This is how he's connected with all these different people. Think about it. Mr. Johnson connected a lot of folks, flat out. It just, it is what it is. But here's the crazy thing, y'all. Here's the crazy thing. I want you to take this. Blacks were lynched. Blacks were shot and killed. I think they said 19 people were killed that day. Um, KKK went out there and was just wiping because he was the great white hope. They were betting. They said when, when they saw their hope fall, Everybody was just leaving the stage. Nobody cheered except for, you know what I'm saying, black folks. We, we heard about it. And of course, you know, we couldn't be there. You know what I'm saying? We heard about it in the streets. So everybody that was celebrating, punished. And this is how 
even though you got the championship, you still have to bear this pain. So history depicts him as being a boisterous man. You know, uh, he was loving according to what they said, you know, and, and he had three three white wives and man was getting it in. But let's think it let's look at it from his perspective. And it's something that we can't, you know, we'll never get a chance to talk to him. I mean, he died in a car accident later in his life. But here's the crazy thing. You guys ever heard of the man law? This is this is something they made up, y'all. This is something, this is Jim Crow bullcrap. They made up a man's law that you can't have a if you're not married. He brought a, a white woman across state lines. They came to his house and arrested him. He was supposed to uh, serve a year. He escaped over to Europe, fought over there. He's still a champion. He comes back, serves out his time. He ends, he winds up losing his championship. He was uh, 37 or something like that. Um, he lost his championship to a bigger guy. They found another white hope. And that white hope beat him again. I guess they said in the paper, America's great again, <laughs> where we heard that before. Now, here's the fun fact, and I say this, make America great again, and it wasn't until the man that quoted that, Mr. Donald Trump, actually got that, I believe he got that expunged from his record. So all the way from the time, you know, like he had this on his record, this man law crap, they were like, yo, I think they tried to get it uh, overturned in 2016, under 2016, and it wasn't until Trump, Trump actually got it overturned in uh so he doesn't have that on his record. So his family, that blemish is gone. There is a blemish, though, that this was such a controversial period of time. And he wasn't the only person that went through stuff. But uh, just know this. It was it sucked. Racism sucked. Hatred sucked. Because at the end of it, like if, even if you take out racism, you put in the word hatred. Uh, because there's a lot of stuff that you can hate in life. Uh, there's people that you can hate. But the, the biggest the biggest thing I took away from this was he got to live life and he enjoyed what he wanted. And, and I know this having multiple wives is not a, a practice that I would even want to try. That's one wife is all I need. <laughs> couldn't imagine having three, but I still couldn't. I definitely couldn't imagine living under those conditions where you're being threatened. Your, your very life is at stake all the time. Now. Fast forward to this, all of us as a community, a mixing bowl of gumbo, so to speak. All of us are under the the fears of uh, our wages. You don't have enough money to make ends meet. There's a lot of stuff that you want to accomplish in life, possibly, and you haven't done it. Uh, I encourage you to, regardless of whatever your situation is, and now you have to be careful because COVID is out there. But I'm going to say, the one thing I take away from this is uh, Mr. Johnson, he pushed through regardless. He pushed through adversity. He showed, I mean, this is a poor boy, poor black boy from uh, from uh, Texas grown into a man that dominated the world. He was the heavyweight champion of the world when it comes to boxing. And that is, whether you want to call it American history or black history, because let's just call it history. Let's just call it history because that's what it is. Because you had white America and black America viewing this man. Everybody, all eyes was on him, not just here across the world. Remember, he went to Europe. So with that being said, don't let anything stop you from achieving greatness. So family, I got to go to work. So uh, blessings, honor to all of, you, all of you people that are trying to make it, man. Stay encouraged. You know what I'm saying? Until the next lightning strike, y'all be blessed.